Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm standing inside the new Chalmers Street entrance building and this provides a new way into and out of Sydney's central station. It opened on Monday the 13th of November 2023 and it's the last significant component of the major central station upgrade that has been taking place as part of the Sydney Metro project. This new entrance dramatically improves interchanges with Sydney Light Rail and makes it easier to access central station from the nearby Surrey Hills area. I'll start with the main entrance on Chalmers Street and then take the escalators down to the new concourse that leads to Central Walk. I'll then cover the upper level that goes to the rear entrance on Randall Lane, which hasn't yet opened. The new entrance building is relatively compact and it's sandwiched between the Sydney Dental Hospital on the north side and apartment building on the south side and Randall Lane at the rear. And if you've been in Sydney for a few years, you might remember the Bounce Hotel, which was demolished to make way for this new station entrance. From the outside, you can see how the entrance on Chalmers Street uses the vast majority of the available space. And it's wonderful to see this large central sign, which is similar to the original signs used on the platforms. There is a glass canopy over the entrance, and above that is the familiar orange T sign for Sydney trains, and a covered over M sign for the future Sydney Metro services. From this new entrance, the central Chalmers Street light rail stop is clearly visible, and there's a very short walk over a bicycle lane and one of the tracks. And from the light rail stop, you can see how close this new entrance is. Below the central sign are the three short escalators that lead to an intermediate level, where three longer escalators take passengers down to the concourse below. And to the right of these escalators are the two lifts. The front windows above Chalmers Street along with the entrance below bring in lots of natural light. And the rear windows on the Randall Lane side do so as well. Interestingly, these rear windows now bring in more natural light than originally anticipated, and I'll explain why later in this video. The columns at the front of this building support the roof in such a way that no further vertical supports are required inside. So that means more space for passengers and better visibility. The side walls are made of glass reinforced concrete, and that's the same material used within Central Walk and on parts of the North South Concourse. And the ceiling features the now familiar white panels with black strips for lighting and CCTV that are also used within Central Walk and other upgraded parts of Central Station. And a similar white panelling has been used for the rear wall and around the windows that overlook Randall Lane. So now taking one of the three short escalators down to this intermediate level. The three longer escalators to the concourse are visible on the left. The intermediate level has one advertising display and more of the white panels. It's really quite boring, but I guess that's deliberate, as it's a place to pass through rather than hang around in. Now looking back towards Chalmers Street, and the combination of natural light combined with the white and sandstone coloured walls gives this area a light and airy feel. These are six of 42 new escalators that have been installed as part of the complete central station upgrade. So now heading down to the concourse, which is immediately visible from these escalators. The sandstone coloured glass reinforced concrete wall continues on the right, whilst the ceiling features more of the white panels with black strips. And now in view are the opal gates, and there are lots of them. This concourse is directly under Chalmers Street. And beyond these opal gates is Central Walk, and the first part of this opened on the 13th of November 2022, which means that the Chalmers Street entrance and concourse opened exactly one year later. But as you'll discover soon, it wasn't supposed to be like that. These eight cladded concrete columns support the Chalmers Street level above, and probably Chalmers Street itself as well. Two of these line up nicely with the opal gates, with a further two close to the start of Central Walk. The existing eastern suburbs passageway around this new concourse has been widened, with two additional columns supporting the roof around the toilet block, which is to the north, and two further columns to the south supporting this more spacious area that has a new lift and wider stairway. These next train displays on the wall have been here for a few months, and they are in the direct line of sight for passengers coming through these two easy access gates, and are visible from the other opal gates too. Once through the gates, most passengers will continue into Central Walk, and then use the lifts or escalators to get to platform 16 to 23, or continue to the north-south concourse, which has the new Sydney Metro platforms below and platforms 12 to 14 above and feeds into the northern concourse for platforms 1 to 11. Turning right out of the opal gates leads to the stairs, lift and northern escalators for the underground eastern suburbs line platforms, which can also be accessed by turning left and heading for the southern escalators. Now looking back into the Chalmers Street concourse, with the three lower escalators now on the left, along with this wide structure for the three upper escalators. 
and from below this structure you can see lots of natural light coming down from the Randall Lane windows above. To the right of this are the two lifts, and behind them is the bare concrete wall that this double lift shaft is attached to, and you can see this on the right side too. And this glass lift shaft also brings in lots of natural light from above. Now I couldn't be here on opening day as I was in Melbourne, but Sharath from Building Beautifully came along, and here are some of his clips of the opening day festivities. So the official opening was at 8am, and in attendance was the New South Wales Transport Minister Joe Halen, along with Peter Regan, the Chief Executive of Sydney Metro, and Matt Longland, the Chief Executive of Sydney Trains. And behind them were several members of the Rail, Fire and Emergency team, and if you haven't yet figured out why they were here, then keep watching. A big thanks to Sharath for those clips, and do check out his TikTok video that is now on the top right and in the description below. So now time to return to street level, and the escalator views going up are quite different. The natural light flooding down from the Randall Lane windows is very noticeable. And it's worth looking to your right to see interesting views of both the lift shaft and the structure for the upper escalators. I filmed this on Friday the 17th of November, which is five days after this opened, and there were just a handful of people using this entrance, but I'm sure this will increase as word gets around. It has the capacity to handle around 26,000 passengers per day. So now back at the intermediate level, and this advertising panel also displays track work and other Sydney trains related information. These upper escalators must be some of the shortest on the network, and it is good to see escalators here, as the easier and cheaper option of using stairs just wouldn't be quite the same. So now back at the Chalmers Street entrance level, with Chalmers Street and the canopies for Central Station suburban platforms now in view. Now let's explore the upper level that goes to Randall Lane. And to get there, you can either use the two lifts, which go up as well as down, or go via the stairs on the right, which are between the lift shaft and the glass reinforced concrete sidewall, and the stairs are illuminated from lights on the underside of the handrails. And at the top of the stairs is the exit to Randall Lane. As you can see, this is not yet opened, but when it does, passengers from Randall Lane will see the stairs straight ahead and the two lifts on their right. There are glass doors at the bottom of the stairs, which direct people around to the right to exit the station or continue down into the concourse. And being outside the Opal Gates means that they can be used as a shortcut from Randall Lane, to both Chalmers Street and the light rail stop. The lift entrance area is a wonderful place to get some amazing views of the escalators below, and the windows and ceiling above, and the central station clock tower too. Ok, time to check out the lifts. So as you saw from below, there are two lifts. And as you probably figured out already, these lifts have three stopping points. L is for this Randall Lane level, S for Chalmers Street below, and C for the concourse. The doors for the Chalmers Street level are on the opposite side. Forty new lifts have been installed as part of this central station upgrade, and each lift can hold up to 27 people. You can see the bare concrete wall on the left, and now the concourse level straight ahead. And as you can see, the lift doors for the concourse are on the same side as the Chalmers Street level. Now the Chalmers Street entrance and concourse was meant to open on Monday the 29th of May 2023. Which would have been on the same day as this fabulous new north-south concourse. In fact a small party including Joe Halen were checking out the Chalmers Street entrance on the morning of Thursday the 25th of May, prior to it opening the following Monday. But then in the afternoon of the same day, a major fire broke out right behind this new entrance. This is Randall Lane here, and the back of the Chalmers Street station building is directly opposite the one that is on fire. And a few minutes later, things took a very dramatic turn. That was bravely filmed by Fire and Rescue New South Wales, and I've put a link to their video in the description. And in this ABC News clip, you can see more clearly how parts of the wall hit the roof and the ventilation structure. The fire took hold within the former R.C. Henderson Hat Factory building that was heritage listed and derelict at the time, and was going to be converted into a hotel. 
These clips came from the Chalmers Street entrance CCTV cameras that overlook Randall Lane. Unfortunately, these do not have any audio, so I've added some sound from the fire and rescue service clips. Within three minutes, over 120 fire crew were fighting this huge fire. And this included personnel from the rail fire and emergency team who were stationed right where I'm standing now. And they were using the fire hose wheel that is behind this door. And here it is, coming out for the very first time. And whilst trying to contain the fire, that wall that you just saw came crashing down, sending huge amounts of debris right into the station entrance, and completely blocking any visibility for a short while. This is the exact same time looking in the other direction. Having survived the wall collapse, they kept going, trying to protect the station entrance as best they could. And you can see hundreds of bricks lining Randall Lane, along with a few in this entrance. But what was about to cause extensive damage was not fire, but water. And this water was coming from broken pipes and from the fire hoses used to contain the fire and prevent it taking hold of this station building. And it wasn't just coming down these stairs, it was flowing into the escalators and lifts too, and for a while dripping down onto platforms 24 and 25. Besides containing the fire, the rail fire and emergency crew were getting bags of concrete to divert the water down these stairs and onto the street, so that damage to escalators, lifts and electrical systems was minimised. The stairs were quite significantly impacted as you can see here, and this included the tactiles as well, and many electrical systems were affected by water coming in through the ceiling and windows, which meant that down on the concourse it was all dark. Bricks, fences and sheets of metal littered Randall Lane. And from the outside, the Chalmers Street entrance looked relatively intact, but there was some damage to the windows. But of course, most visible was the crumpled ventilation outlet, which had come through the roof causing further damage to the building itself. This was beyond repair and would need to be replaced, so it was dismantled piece by piece and chucked in the bin. A bit of a thankless task really, but I guess someone had to do it. There was also significant damage to the roof and the top of the brick facade as you can see here. By late June, scaffolding had gone back up on the north side of the building and peeking through the fence you could see the concrete sandbags that had channeled the water down the stairs and out onto the street. And the lights were back on in the concourse with scaffolding in place for the repair work. By the end of July, the crumpled vent outlet had gone and the damaged brickwork had been removed as well. And this charred timber is all that remains of the former R.C. Henderson hat factory. By late August, the new vent outlet had started to appear. And by early September, scaffolding was in place to allow further work to take place on the new vent outlet and also to repair the brick facade. And down below, things were looking more normal, with the escalator lights back on. By mid-October, the work on the brick facade had been completed and now sitting on the roof is the new ventilation outlet. So that's the reason why the Chalmers Street entrance didn't open as planned on Monday the 29th of May. The repair cost was 3.2 million and this was covered by insurance. One part that did open as planned on the 29th of May is this new toilet block just north of the Chalmers Street concourse. It has the standard gents toilet on the left which looks like this inside. And then a unisex accessible and ambulant toilet. And then the standard ladies toilets on the right which I'll wander into now. No you can't go in there Paul. Just kidding Siri. Where can people go to find out more about you? Um, you can find me over um, on the top right hand corner of the screen just there. Um, I do transport and infrastructure stuff, but I also do disability advocacy as well. Just sort of to be a little bit different from everybody else. That's great. Thank you very much, Matthew. You're welcome. Anytime. As I mentioned earlier, the Randall Lane entrance is not yet in use, and that's due to ongoing work to resurface Randall Lane, which was severely damaged by the fire. This was how this road looked on the 17th of November. 
and a week later on the 24th of November, resurfacing work had been completed around the station building. So I don't think it will be long before the Randall Lane entrance opens. So I'm now going to briefly show you seven things that have changed elsewhere on Central Station since my last video in June. Number one. In Central Walk, the temporary court flute platform numbers at the escalator entrances have been replaced with these much larger numbers, which are far easier to see, especially from a distance. And these larger platform numbers have also appeared on the Northern Concourse for platforms 8 to 14. Number two. The resurfacing and retiling work on platforms 16 to 23 that included raising them slightly has now been completed. And this means that the extra fences around the northern escalators to platforms 16 and 17 and 18 and 19 have been removed. These have been necessary to protect passengers from height variations around these escalators. Number three. The same new seats that were installed on platforms 12 to 14 have now appeared on platforms 16 to 23. And this is wonderful to see, as these platforms previously had no seating. These seats are just beyond the northern escalators to Central Walk, and close to the stairway at the southern end of these platforms. And to create space for the seats at the southern end, one of the old stairwells was covered over, as it wasn't really needed following the opening of Central Walk. And those old stairwells led to this tunnel, which is now a non-public area. Number four. Two sets of seats have been added to Central Walk, and these are the same as those in the North-South Concourse. Number five, the hoardings around the platform 14 lift have been removed, resulting in a more uninterrupted view into Central Walk from the North-South Concourse. Number six, two large information displays have been installed at the southern end of the North-South Concourse. These have an interactive map and a video describing the history of this area and the amazing archeological finds. And finally, number seven, the Sydney Metro worksite entrance at the southern end of platforms 12 and 13 has closed. So what, I hear you say? Well, this entrance and passageway is right bang smack in the way of the track bed for the future lines into platforms 13 and 14, which is why they have looked like this for quite a few months. After a new worksite entrance opened on platform 14, demolition of this old passageway commenced. The junctions for the future tracks into these two platforms have been in place for over two years now. And the partial removal of this passageway means that you now get good views of the track bed and the edge of platform 14. And notice how this platform continues beyond the track bed to provide staff access to the Sydney Metro Services buildings. So I reckon we'll see the tracks and overhead catenary being installed for these two platforms within the next couple of months. And with all other work done, they should open soon after this work has been completed. So that's the new Charmer Street entrance and an update on everything else happening here at Central Station. Please like this video, subscribe if you haven't done so already and leave a comment or question below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.